Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. I had an unusual week. I've been formed with three different sermons I've been studying. One I'm going to do in the near future on Hezekiah, the king in the Old Testament. Another one on superstition. And then the one I'm speaking on today. Well, I got a lot to study on the first two that I just mentioned and all. And I was working on this. And somehow, I lost it. <laughs> and I was on the computer. I looked everywhere. I can do searches on the computer for files and just everything. And couldn't find it. I spent a couple days looking for it. Because I, I know I didn't delete it. At least I don't remember hitting anything that would cause a delete. And, uh, and I couldn't find it. And I said, I must have deleted it. Well, by the time that was, it was like Wednesday. And I said, what am I going to do? I haven't even got anything to preach on. Because I, the other ones weren't nowhere near ready. And, uh, and I started doing the superstitious one. And see if I could put something, keep something together, short, short notice. And then... All of a sudden, Thursday evening, Friday morning, something occurred to me. You know, I, I have what is called Dropbox, and it's in the phone. It's, uh, it kind of synchronizes among the computers. I, well, I have a desktop and a laptop. I, I don't use the laptop unless I'm out of town. But I went, I wonder if it would be in the deleted file on my phone, because there was a deleted file, and I'll be darned if it wasn't there. It wasn't on the computer deleted, but it was on that. And I went, I don't know how it got there and why it's there, but I opened it up and then saved it and put it in the proper spot and all. And so I didn't have all the time I wanted even on this one <laughs> because it's so quick. And, uh, but uh, I did spend extra time even yesterday uh, uh, going over it and everything. So it's going to be a little shorter than normal. Most of my uh, sermons are shorter anyhow. But this morning we're going to be talking about treating others with consideration, and we're only going to be in one verse, as you can see. And uh, now, if you notice, the the verse I got there is the Amplified version. It says A M P, you know, for that. And now, this verse is talking about love. Now, in your Bible, you might have the word charity, and uh, but charity and love is the exact same word in the Greek. Okay, I like just using the word love, and this is one of the love chapters in the Bible. So I was talking about, and the subject is love. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> so here's what, uh, let's read. I'm trying to get my throat still. <coughs> uh, okay, it's talking about love now. It is not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, uh, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights, on its own way. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Now this is in contrast, or contrast uh, to the inconsistency behavior of the Christian in the Church of Corinthians. Corinthians, First and Second Corinthians, is the worst church. The Corinthian church was the worst church in the whole Bible. Okay, if you want to find out what not to do, you go to First and Second Corinthians, and um, and if you read it and spend time in it, you'll see that Paul's trying to correct the problems in it, all kinds of problems. Uh, many of them were overindulging with their love feast that they had. They were getting drunk on the communion wine and all. No, it was abusing things. And by the way, I'm going to give you, I'm not looking it up, I'm not reading from it, but I'm going to give you the scriptures where all this comes from. Like what I just said is in 1 Corinthians 11, 20 to 22. Some of the women were overstepping their bounds by removing their veils. They would wear, you know, it was a hat, a veil, when they went to church and also they were uh, trying to t- uh, take the role of men in the church 
and all. And that's found in First Corinthians eleven three through sixteen and chapter fourteen through thirty four to thirty five. And by the way, if you happen to be interested in it, at the end of service, I'll give you those verses again. Both men and women were corrupting the worship services by trying to outdo one another with spiritual gifts. My spiritual gift was better than your spiritual gift. And they were trying to make a big deal out of it. (coughs) I don't know what that caught my throat. (coughs) Considerate behavior demonstrates godly love and adds credibility to our witness. Obviously, this wasn't happening in the Corinthian church. And that's why he's talking about what love really is here. And a real love treats others with consideration. Now, what I'm going to do is do a part of the, the, the verse here. Uh, it is not conceited or arrogant or inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, uh, or does not act unbecomingly. I want to read something from a friend of mine, a pastor, that wrote this about himself uh, that I got. It says here, When I was a young child, I loved to slurp my uh, soup. I didn't, it, it didn't seem, see any harm in doing it, even though my parents constantly objected. Then one evening, I ate with someone who slurped his soup. He was having a great time, but I didn't enjoy my meal very much. Then I realized that proper table manners are one way of showing consideration for others. It says, I care about you and don't want to do anything that might disrupt your enjoyment of this meal. I never thought of it that way. I don't know if you have. I've never slurped uh, soup, but uh, when we do something... Sometimes we don't realize how it might affect other people. And that's what this sermon is about this morning. I'm going to give you another illustration. Now, this is true. A true story. Okay, I want to make sure you understand this because it's fun. in a way it's funny and sad. I know a couple who got an annulment on the grounds that the husband was rude to his wife. She claimed that his inconsistent burping proved that he didn't really love her. The judge ruled in her favor, stating that if the husband truly loved her, he would have been more considerate. This is a strange story, but a true one, and illustrates the point that love is not rude. There's lots of lessons here. Now, in your Bible, the word uh, conceited might be unruly or unseemly. It's the same word, but here's what the word means. It includes any behavior that violates an accept, uh, that violates acceptable biblical and social standards. It covers a lot of area, in other words. Now, the next point here in this verse, it says, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own ways. It's always about the other person. When Christ was on earth, it was always about the other person. It was it's never about him. It was always about always preparing food for people. Always he always did stuff for other people. We should be just like him. We could paraphrase this by saying love is considered of the other person. Love is considered the other person. The Corinthian church was not a good one. It had many, many problems. And as we read through it, we see that Paul is dealing with these problems. And this was one of them. And it's not about us, but it's about everybody else. you got to really think about that. And this has taught me a valuable lesson that I'm going to give you today. Now, I uh, dragged my feet. <laughs> she, she loves this. Here's what ha- I, as far back as I can remember, it was in the previous house. Uh, well, before we moved in, the carpet was really bad, so new carpet came in, and the guy we bought it from paid, uh, he was a contractor, and he let us get it at cost. Instead of getting what most houses, when they get carpet in the house, it's contractor grade, they call it. We decided to go up a couple notches, so because we got it at wholesale, so we did. 
And I never forget, I love, and when I'm in my house and I don't have anybody uh, visiting, I always walk barefoot in the house. And I love putting my feet through the carpet. That's what I used to do. But somehow it became a tremendous habit. Well, back at the other house, it didn't matter because we didn't have wood floors. And, uh, and uh, But now that we have wood floors in this house, I, I don't realize what kind of noise it makes. And she's got super hearing to begin with. I call her superwoman. And, uh, she can be in the bedroom, the furthest part away from the house, while I'm in the kitchen with her door closed, and she can hear me walking because of dragging my feet. Well, before the sermon... I really tried to stop. Now, she had me wear little... So- I have socklets, you know, you wear in tennis shoes. I usually wear them in the house, so when I am dragging, it doesn't make any noise. But I got to thinking, that's not fixing the problem. So I really, when she's in bed in the morning, I try to consciously... I sit there and I walk and I, I pick my feet, I think about it, and I'm trying to break the habit. And all. But when I started studying this sermon, it really got to me that I'm being inconsiderate to my wife. And then I got to thinking, you know, this works both ways. (laughs) For all of us. And not just for marriage, but for relatives, for everything. If we're rude in what we do, and we're not considered for the other people around us, that can be a problem. And then when you want to be a testimony and tell them about Jesus Christ, they're not going to sit there and want to listen to you. God, when He teaches us something, it's for a reason. And understand, He's way above us, and He knows more of what's going on than we do. The best thing is, is just obey. <laughs> because there's a great reason behind it. And that's what taught me this here. And now, I haven't completely eliminated this dragging but I've cut it down about 80% or so uh, so I still find myself doing it every once in a while but it takes a while to, to, to get rid of a habit sometimes especially when you're never thinking about it you know this one way we can all improve our marriage our relationship with our parents with relatives with friends and everything else because let's face it we may do things that somebody may never say to you that they don't like you doing it may turn them off they may not want to be around you whatever and uh, simply because you're doing something and we literally you we got to get to the point in our life where am i being rude to somebody uh, and how I say something. I mean, something might be bad where you, uh, like, somebody's doing something to you, and, and there's a nice way of saying it, and there's a rude way. Now, me, I like being direct. If you have a problem with me, I have more respect for you if you tell me what, the, what you don't like to me than to hide it, and I keep sensing something's weird with you, you know, with the relationship. I don't mind. I may not like the truth. But on one of my TV shows, they said, they were asking about, should I tell my wife the truth? <coughs> it could be cause more problems. And he said, well, he said, my parents always told me, he says, the truth is the truth. It may be hard to say sometimes, but it's still the truth. And people get over the truth faster than they get over a lie. Think about treating others with consideration. Well, as our relationship with others, everything can improve if we start thinking. There's an easy way of thinking about this. Always consider everybody else, whoever they are. Always consider the other person in a group, wherever you're at. You'll never go wrong if he keeps doing that and go, okay, uh, I need to, well, they may not like the way I'm dressed, they may not like this, and all. And, uh, I mean, we can't please everybody. And, and uh, like one person said, you know, uh, Apostle Paul says, you know, what, what, he was eating meat that was given to idols. He thought there was nothing wrong with it. But other Christians felt that that was wrong. Why? Because it was given to an idol. So he decided, if it hurts that Christian that bad, I'm not going to do it. So obviously there's times you got to think about that. And, uh, and then there's other times it, it's not that big a deal. 
uh, of whatever that decision you need to make. Here's another example. I've seen Christians do this a lot. They're very rude towards a non-Christian who smokes and they destroy the opportunity of trying to tell them about Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, you shouldn't be smoking in this area. You know, it's a non-smoking area or something like that. And, uh, how are we ever going to be a testimony to anybody? You never will ever know. I, my friend, uh, Fontana Village. I don't. How many has ever been to Fontana Village? The dam. Well, the, the Fontana Dam, which is right before you get to the uh, snake and all. The where you know the snake, the dragon, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> okay. The river flows towards that. Anyhow, and the dam was built there, and they had a village where the people that worked and built the dam lived there. Well, after that was all done, at some point they turned it into a resort. And we stayed there, I think, twice in our lifetime. And, uh, and you can camp out, you can do horseback riding, and the, 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 the lake is right across the street, basically. You can do boating and stuff like that. But well, we went there for weekends. You're in the middle of nowhere, by the way. You're 30 miles away from anything when you're in that village. Uh, we stayed in a hotel there that served, uh, had a restaurant. Where I think that was the only restaurant in the whole village. And, uh, but we were set there and we prayed for our meal. And didn't think, no, I don't pray out loud. It's just the two of us, you know, just pray. And, uh, and I think the second time we went in there, the, the, uh, the lady that served us said, you know, it was very refreshing to see someone pray to God about their food. Didn't know people were watching. There's somebody watching. You don't know if you will affect somebody that happens to be watching what you do or how you act and what you do. So we got to be careful with that. Be aware of how you treat others, whether believers or unbelievers. Even the smallest and courteous thing can make a profound impression on someone. Too many people today use the word love wrong. And I hate to say that. When I was a teenager, if I, well, I met her when I was a teenager. We dated. Well, I liked her. And then I liked her a lot. So what we do? We go steady. You get a ring and all, and we go steady. Well, lots of steadies broke up and never dated again. And some steadies eventually became marriages and all. Today, they don't have steady nothing. Their steady is get married. I like this person. They don't know what the word love really means. And what happens a week later, five weeks later, a year later, whatever, and then end up in a divorce. They don't even know the person. And I'm not saying someone can't meet somebody and two weeks later get married and have a wonderful marriage. I've heard of that happening, but it is rare. I knew her five years before we got married. And uh, I didn't plan it that way. It just worked out that way. As I look back, I went, oh, that's really great. We knew each other. We knew the bad and good of each other. And uh, Naturally, hers was more good and mine was all bad. <laughs> I've had people tell me, I know somebody that's a friend, that uh, when they had the accident, him and his girlfriend, and, oh, I love you, and I love you. And they talked about love the whole time I was in the hospital and everything with each other and all. And they never got married, and nothing ever happened. Were they really in love? Or did they just like each other? The definition of love in the Bible, they couldn't have loved each other. Not that definition. And if they, the word is used loosely today. To me, it's used the way we like people in the 60s. Think about others before you mouth off. Be a witness for Christ. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm seeing some reactions here. It's cute. I hope this helps. I, I would have liked to have uh, went a little further with it, but time didn't. I just didn't have the time. 
and I apologize for that. But I still think of what I said today can be a. I know it got a hold of me just with what I studied in it. It helped me in my personal life. One thing I like about my preaching is a lot of times God speaking to my heart, and when I'm preparing the message and all. And uh, I look forward to the other messages I just made, but I'll have time to, to look at that. Oh, I do have a prayer request, by the way. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.